to be back. Come on, stand to your feet. And let's sing our opening hymn. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Are you ready to have a good time? Let's have a good time. I'm glad to be back in the pulpit. What a fellowship. selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. I'm sorry. Be gracious to me according to your word. Conform to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. See that I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, be gracious to me.
and the Gospel reading comes from the book of Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 15 through 20. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If you are listened to, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If that person refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the, re if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God to the people of God. Lord, we do know that your promise, wherever two or more are gathered in your name, you are here among us. We feel your presence, Lord. We praise your presence with us, and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to share your Holy Spirit with one another. We pray, Lord, that the words we hear today, the feelings that we feel, what moves us will move us out beyond these walls into the community because you are with us and you want us to ever expand your kingdom here on earth. Lord, be with us as you always are, as we worship you today and every day. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
while you're standing, come on and let's pass the peace. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning. Wences to all of you. It is good to be seen. Come on, sing it with us before we get to the Lord's Prayer. sing our shamanic hymn, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he will kindly will help me. He ever loves me and cares for his own.
Soften our hearts, open up our minds, and we're grateful to give you the praise. We need to hear from you just to make it another step, to make it another way. Give us hope for the journey, and courage and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. I'm going to make a right at the light, as, as you see our scriptures. If you have your bulletin, it's also in the bulletin. I want you all to read the first five verses in unison. Is that all right? And then I'll pick up at verse six. Let's read together. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore and then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat when he said to Simon put out into the deep water and let your nets for a catch I mean answer master we have worked all day long but have caught nothing yet if you say so I will let down the nets and when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to burst. So they, so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they can begin, the boat began to sink. You can help me if you want to. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he said all who were with him were astounded at the catch of fish that had taken. And, and, and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. You may be seated. You all did pretty well turning right at the light. I like that. I'm using as a thought this morning, deep water, going out into deep water. Now, I, I know it's been several weeks since I preached, so you all know the deal. You're going to have to help me preach. Amen. Encourage my heart. Right? Encourage my heart. Amen. Make me feel loved. Make me feel wanted. Amen. All right. So, a few months ago, I preached a sermon entitled, What's Next? You've heard me say this before, but it reserve, deserves repeating as a reminder, we are not here at Wences just marking time. The Spirit has caused our lives to intersect for collective work and life. Y'all believe that? It, it, it was said multiple times in multiple ways yesterday, for sure. We spent most of the summer reflecting on what spiritual tools and mindset and fortitude will take to walk this path of what's next. 
Love has been a part of our core understanding, our core undergirding theology since December, and unity has been our solid foundation. We can disagree in love. We can have differing or competing ideas with mutual respect, with love binding us together. Not agree politically and still love each other in, in our disagreements, even if there are disagreements are not rooted in the oppression of the other person. In my short time here at Wentz's, I have been challenging us to go out into deep water. The elders, the music, music team, consistory, in particular, Mike, and I'm sure June is over there saying amen, they can testify that I have been stretching in their thinking and in their doing. I'm sure many of you have experienced the same thing. Some of it is my pushing, and a good deal of it is meeting the moment we are living in. The past few months, we have organized a finance subcommittee and have been actively exploring ways of being and seeing about the resources of the church in ways perhaps some have not been accustomed to. In the preaching moment, we have engaged sensitive topics around race, politics, women's health choices, and other things, calling out the elephant in the room. Have you been here? Right? Right? That, my friends, simply and accurately put, is going into deep water. All of us have been challenged to go out into deep water in life and in spiritually in 2023, and dare I say, at moments throughout our entire lives. If my mic is too loud, feel free to turn it down. Truth is, going into areas and places and situations we are unfamiliar with is anxiety producing. We like the shallows. In the shallows, you can see your feet and know every step we are taking. In the shallows, you know you won't drown. In the shallows, you have the assurance that you can retreat back to familiar terra firma or solid ground whenever you get ready. But the shallows can also be lonely and a humdrum place, a place where life can be dull and dreary because the shallows are void of greatness. The shallows allow us to think about the poor now and then, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and maybe Easter. We can avoid thorny topics and hard conversations around race and race rela relations. We'll deal with that on MLK Day and the entire month of February, Black History Month. Shallows allow us to say nothing about trans youth struggles and the emotional, physical violence they face just to be in society because we think we don't know any of them and that's someone else's issue. We'll just keep doing the same program because that's how Grandmama Mary used to do it and how Pappy did it in 1899. Many of us are so risk averse we never venture out past our own backyards because of fear. Whether that's the fear of failure, fear of being alone, fear of the unknown, the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. Or fear of what people might say. I have found over the years, great growth does not happen during mountaintop experiences. Great growth happens in the valleys and the low places of life. Without a doubt, I know I am called to preach in these times because I've experienced my share of these low moments, seasons of despair so fraught, I began to think that I had offended God in some fashion. Now, I don't know about you, but I've experienced the valley of the shadow of death where it was just me and God, and God had to remind me that he was there with me even in the valley, even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. You are my rod and you are my staff. And not only that, but you comfort me. I'm preaching from experience. In the movie, because I like movies, A Star is Born, Lady Gaga launches her singing career with a song about those shallows. She asked her partner, aren't you tired of trying to fill that void? I'm off the deep end. Watch as I dive in. We're far from the shallow now. And as you watch the movie, we, we see her slowly overcome her fear of failure. It's clear 
that heading out into deep water takes courage. But Luke's recount of an unplanned fishing trip on Lake Genderac gives us plenty of opportunity for reflection and thoughtful consideration about the difference between living in the shallows and intentionally heading out to deep water. Y'all still with me? Luke paints the scene of a typical seashore with two boats beached on the banks after an unsuccessful day of fishing. The fishermen were packing it in, preparing to clean their nets and lay them out to dry for another day. Jesus appears on the scene and shakes things up right at the light, if you will. Jesus tells Simon to launch the boat out into the shallows a few feet from shore so he can use the boat as a pulpit to speak to the gathering crowd that had followed him. The Bible does not tell us what the lesson was for that crowd that day. When Jesus had finished teaching, he turned to the disciples and says, go out into deep water. And that's where our today's message begins and our thinking is engaged. It's a message about commands, excuses, and possibilities. God is saying to us, Winces, to go deep, to use a football metaphor on Eagle Sunday. When Jesus told Simon Peter, go out into deep water, it probably sounded foolish or silly, sounded like a novice trying to tell the expert how things should roll. We all know people like that. You know the ones who go to the doctors and tell the doctor what they ain't going to do, what they are going to do, but their diagnosis from WebMD is better than the one that, whose office that they're sitting in. Or the clerk at the grocery store who thinks they're a constitutional scholar because they watch cable news. Or whose parent, who, a parent whose choice of a colon versus a semicolon comes down to a coin flip telling the teacher what they know and what they don't know. These fishermen had fished all day and come up dry. And Simon Peter knew the waters of that lake inside and out. He had grown up on the lake. He knew the spawning beds, the feeding places, the times of the tide. So he argued with Jesus that he command, what he commanded was senseless, if you will. We have worked all night long and come up empty. Zilch, nada. The command seemed foolish to Simon. That even though Luke wrote this gospel many years later, he remembered Simon's reaction of protest. Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. But the lesson Jesus taught the crowd that day must have been a very powerful one. Because Simon responded the way we all should respond when Christ pushes us. Simon said, if it be your will, if you say so, nevertheless... And Peter launched the boat into deep water. Peter, a skilled fisherman, had given his best and he was tired and ready to quit. Have you ever been there? Tired and ready to quit. Convinced that he had done all he could do that day. But I don't care how wise we think you are or we are. Christ knows best. God can see the beginning from the end and all in between. The Holy Spirit is saying to you and I in this moment, relax. I got this. And I don't know what your this is, but I hear the Spirit saying, relax, keep calm, and just carry on. God is in control. Perhaps it may seem foolish to some who are here today or viewing on YouTube, Zoom, or watching online at a later time. All the road signs seem to point to a contrary answer. Doors shut at every turn, but remember, Christ is no fool. And the Holy Spirit does not give senseless instructions. If God calls you, you should answer. I'll say it again. If God calls you, you should answer. Black slaves used to sing a song when their bodies were beaten and down and then their spirits were worn. The lyrics said, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. And when he calls me, I will answer. I will be somewhere listening for my name. We are full of why not, cannot, and should not. There are always reasons for refusing to go deep. We don't don't have to think long and hard to put the litany of them together. We've always done it this way and not that way. I've tried that already. I don't have the time. I can't work with those people. I don't have the experience. They hurt my feelings and never apologize. Am I in the right church? And that all sounds valid, don't they? It's in our human nature to make excuses, but excuses are nothing more than assumptions based on faulty perspectives. You have heard me say this in differing forms, and I still believe it today. Hear me, Winces, if you value a friendship or relationship that has gone sideways, go fix it. Try to mend it. Do your part to make things right. 
in life, we will all come times when we'll have to choose whether being right is more important than maintaining a relationship. Choose wisely. When we do the cannot, should not dance excuse, we are looking at the world solely through our natural eyes. And Christ wants us to see the world through our spiritual eyes too. What are you saying, Rev? The notion that you and I will drown if we go out into deep water is a human response. It assumes that Jesus can no longer walk on water. It assumes Jesus no longer can speak to the storm and calm its rage. It suggests Jesus no longer can speak to the turmoil in your emotions and say, peace be still, or turn your waterlogged situation into wine worthy of celebration. I'm a witness, Wences. Jesus never fails. The older people in the church that I grew up in used to say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. He may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. And finally, faith opens the doors to possibilities when we stay in the shallows and wear it like a security blanket. We can do that. We can be afraid and paralyzed by, by it, so never launch out into a deep, or we can put all of our trust in God. It's hard to explain sometimes how faith is operationalized in our lives. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The apostle Paul understood that faith has a mysterious element too. It's a mixture of human and divine. Paul describes it this way in Ephesians 2 and 8, by, for by the grace by grace we are saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any person should boast. According to that scripture, God is the primary mover of this thing called faith. It's a gift provided through his ever-present grace, but faith has a human element too, a role that we must play. Believing is not enough. I'm going to say it again. Believing is not enough. Believing must be coupled with doing. Believing must be coupled with doing. Our fellowship with God opens possibilities when we are willing to be used of God. When we can affirmably say, here my Lord, send me for your service. I don't have much available to you. Like the young man with the fish and the loaves of bread, he placed it in the hands of the only one that could take the little and turn it into enough. When we commit ourselves to Christ, the unexpected happens. Look at our text again. Look what happened to Simon and James and John when they were willing to believe and to do. They launched out into deep and they had to call for the other boat to help them land all the fish. An empty vessel becomes full when Christ is present. Possibilities become privileges when Christ is present. Let me say that again. Possibilities become privileges when Jesus is present. When we least expect it, God does the impossible. Faith requires action. God has something for each of us to do if we will heal the command, heed the command, and go out into the deep water. For we are laborers together with God. We were having, the, I was having breakfast with the trustees on Saturday, and Corey was giving us an update on how Eric was doing in naval basic training. And so I thought about this as I was thinking about this sermon. You may not be able to pilot the ship or captain the ship, but you can cook for the crew. There's something for all of us to do. That's the part I'm getting at. The possibilities are endless if we believe and do. It's possible to assail the mountains of discouragement if we believe and do. It's possible to win victory over hate if we believe and engage. It's possible to penetrate the walls that have kept so many from experiencing real opportunity if we believe and make room. Y'all with me in here? It's possible to witness the overthrow of defeat if we believe and do. It's possible to claim the promises of God if we believe and do. But you have to head out into deep water. Get ready, June. Get out of the shadows, out of our comfort zone, and uncover the secrets of deep faith in God. 
I'm a witness that Christ can erase all our doubts and questions and skepticism and apprehension and fear. If not erase them, at least alleviate it some. If your vessel is empty, hear me, Winston. If your vessel is empty,